everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure to introduce Cal Poly Pomona alumna Cecile Guerra. Cecile graduated in 1990 as a computer information systems major. Her presentation today will be on preparing for the real world, financial planning and tips. This session will be recorded and a copy will be placed on the alumni resource website. Uh, we will also be sending all registrants a link to the recorded video following the presentation. At the end of each section, Cecile will pause to allow for questions. If you have a question, please type it in the chat box and I will be monitoring the chat to make sure your question is answered. We're going to begin by taking a quick poll. Please answer the following questions so that our speaker has a better idea of who's in the audience. I'm doing the poll too. If you just joined us, please uh, fill out the poll so that our speaker has a, a better idea of who's in the audience. Okay, um, it looks like uh, we have 83% alumni, 17% student, 67% um, of the population don't have a plan, and 33% do. 67% um, have a LinkedIn account, and 33% currently do not. Um, so without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Cecile Guerra. Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Um, can we test out the Zoom feature by showing me your reaction? Let's see. Oh, um, can we start my video too? It says I can, oh, there you go. All right. Okay, so Drew, you're doing well. Luz, how are you doing? Okay, awesome. All right. Well, can you believe it? It's September 1st. Um, if you're Filipino like I am, oh, Christmas starts in September. So <laughs> we're, we're starting to play our music. Um, I'm not as good as everybody else. I don't start decorating until actually um, the Christmas Eve. So um, I hope you guys are doing well. And thank you for taking the time to um, come and join us today. Um, I told my kids that I was going to do a presentation and, you know, I was always wondering, you know, how, how many are going to join. And when Andrea told me that Stephanie registered, I'm like, wow, you know, I couldn't pay my kids to attend my uh, presentations, even if I, I paid them. So first of all, um, let me introduce myself really quick. Um, my name is Cecile Guerra. And uh, like Andrea's said, I'm an alumni, a very, very, very proud Cal Poly alumni. Um, I graduated in 1990, um, way older than you guys are, but young at heart. And I'm a wife. I have three kids. And my oldest is actually a recent Cal Poly alum, Christopher Guerra. He graduated in 2018, also a CIS major. Um, experience. So I started as an application developer working for LA County. And, um, you know, over the years, I've done anything from application development, to um, database management, to working on um, ERP systems, enterprise resource planning uh, systems like SAP, um, managing a team 
you know, of IT, uh, IT specialists, both uh, onshore and offshore. And, um, and currently I'm, I'm employed at USAA as um, project manager lead. So I also have my project management certification and I'm currently working on my master's degree, my MBA in information technology management. Uh, I'm also a proud, uh, very proud Boy Scout and Girl Scout leader. So I'm, I'm very involved. Um, you know, if you have kids, one of the things that um, you're gonna find out is that if the parents are involved, then you know, your kids get more out of the experience. And um, having sent all three kids to Catholic school, I'm also an experienced fundraiser. So, um, you know, that's another thing that you're gonna uh, have to go through when you become a parent is become involved. So, uh, raise a show of hands. How many of you, uh, when you were children, you know, had, uh, were, were involved in sports or, or any other extracurricular activities? And um, how many of you had active parents behind it? Let me see a show of hands. Okay. Let me look at my gallery view here. Awesome. Okay. All right. Cool. So I'm also going to put in my disclaimer alert. Okay. So the information that I'm going to present to you today is based on my personal experience and the materials that I'm using in the presentation uh, or um, are for only for educational purposes only and nothing conveyed or provided should be considered legal accounting or tax advice. FYI. So um, the other thing too is that um, as a Cal Poly student, you know, we all have the learning by doing philosophy. So I'm also going to encourage you to, you know, once you, we get through the presentation, also do your own research, right? Um, we all seem to have a little bit more free time uh, this time around. I don't know what you guys are doing, but I've been watching a whole lot of YouTube videos about financial management and all that. And there's a lot of information out there compared to, um, you know, back in the 90s uh, before really the, the internet was widely available. Okay, uh, next slide, please. All right, kids. So. I've been out of college for 30 years. So <laughs> it's funny because um, when I looked at the date, you know, and the year when I'm doing this presentation, my God, it's been 30 years since I graduated from Cal Poly Pomona. And a lot of things have happened since then, obviously, right? Um, I was still in your 20s. I went through my 30s, my 40s, and now I'm in my early 50s, although I know you can't tell that I, you know, that I'm in my 50s. But what I wanted to share with you is kind of like a retrospective. Um, I'm going to start off with that. So Anna, can you move over to the next slide, please? Uh, next one. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to start off with this and, and you're also going to get this presentation, but, um, as I've gone through the years of, of living, you know, graduating from school, getting married, you know, moving up, changing jobs, you know, so on and so forth, you know, these are some of the things that um, I've learned along the way. And so if, if uh, I think 67% or 83% or of the attendees are alumni, right? So I'm, I'm not sure how many of you guys, um, you know, do stand-ups or, you know, are involved in projects, but retrospective is a way of looking back and really taking a look at, you know, gosh, if I could do it all over again, what would I do? So I'm going to go over this page really quickly, but um, a lot of it will make sense, you know, when, when I get over to the next section of my presentation. So um, as far as career goes, we're going to start with that. Um, if, if you're working right now, uh, one of the things that I'm going to encourage you to do is continue to invest in yourself. You know, just because you graduated from college doesn't mean that the learning stops. So, um, you know, find out, you know, what kind of training is available to you. 
and make sure that um, you're, you're taking advantage of it. The second one that's very, very important is to go get yourself a mentor, both at your job and also outside, right? So a mentor is not necessarily one that can uh, just help you get um, further ahead in your, in your job at work, but a mentor can also give you perspective, you know, somebody that you can bounce ideas off on. And a mentor is going to be the one asking you the hard questions, you know, when you're finding a concern or when you're finding a, a complaint, that'll be your, uh, I would call it your second set of eyes and ears. The other thing that um, I also, you know, uh, have, implemented across the year along the years is to grow and maintain your network so uh, raise of hand how many of you um, are involved or was involved in any student organization at cal poly let me see that okay why all right awesome okay okay awesome all right so um if if you don't have a network network right now I would suggest you know starting off and and really working really hard to grow and maintain it uh don't be that person that only reaches out to their friends when they need help right it's it's supposed to be a give and take relationship and that network will actually um help pay off dividends in the future the other thing is um updating updating your resume at least once a year Okay, so for those of you who are just starting, you have to do this, right? And this is also a good way to, to see, you know, hey, have I grown in the past year? You know, are, am I adding to my toolkit of skills? You know, what, what's happening, you know, over in, in my career over the last year, right? You can also use it as a springboard for having that development plan conversation with your manager. Okay, uh, the next one is volunteering to take on new tasks. Volunteering to take on new tasks has paid off dividends for me, right? It can be uh, something that you may not be comfortable in doing, but, but I've found that raising your hand and saying, yes, I'm going to take that on, um, you know, makes you a lot more, um, what do they call that, valuable in the workplace. Okay, um, let me see here. The other thing is, again, right, you know, with, with especially right now during the pandemic, um, you know, I, I have um, friends of mine, you know, where their kids graduated, you know, class of 2020, and it wasn't the experience that they thought they were going to have, again, because of the pandemic, right? So there's going to be detours along the way. Uh, life is not a straight journey. So if, if there's like one thing that you can take away from this talk right here, um, and it, it's, it is enjoying the detours, right? Because sometimes, you know, on these detours, you, you find out that, oh my God, you know, if it wasn't for that, you know, I would not have had this rich experience that I have right now. And I, I'll give an example of that in a little bit. Um, Every, every year, you have to really figure out what is your why, right? Um, and that why may change over time. That why is going to be your North Star if, you know, things kind of get, you know, off kilter. You're always going to go back to that why. So ha having a good understanding of what that why is, it's, it's going to be helpful. Finances. This is something that... I am insisting all of my kids really, you know, like I'm, I'm working with them to have like a great foundation in finances. And if you know how to manage your money well, I, I, you know, having a great foundation, it's, it's actually going to um, help you out. If, for example, you want to move, move in your career, uh, make changes, um, and, you know, and again, I'm, I'm going to refer back to what's going on right now with COVID, right? A lot of people are, are losing their jobs. They're getting laid off. And if you're living paycheck to paycheck, 
and you lose your job, then you, you get, you know, you get yourself backed into a corner and that's never, never good. Um, I listened to Dave Ramsey and Chris Hogan. And, and again, one of the things that I found out though, or that I've learned over the years is that not having any debt and having a great financial foundation gives you options. So um, you need to learn how to budget. Budget is not really a bad word, you know, if, if, you, if you do it properly. Um, I did retail therapy a lot in the day. And, um, you know, if I could only go back in time and, and really focus on my why, that would actually really um, uh, curtail all the, the retail therapy that I did over the last few years. Uh, work on being debt free and then live within your means. Okay, so if you have questions before I go over to the next section, uh, please type them now so I can, uh, I can respond to those questions. I don't see anything in the chat window. Hmm. All right, so no questions. All right, I guess we're moving on to the next section. So um, again, right, we have 83% alumni here and um, I'm going to be asking you for, um, you know, which, which ones of these statistics resonates with you and what of the stats uh, gives you pause. So the um, average Cal State um, monthly student loan payment is $221.17. I don't know if, if you guys, how many of you guys have student loans? Uh, raise your hand, show me on the reaction screen. Okay. All right. Does um, 221, is, is it like, is it right about that amount, high or lower? What, what, uh, what does it look like? Okay, high, all right. Um, Average monthly payment for a new car is 554. Uh, average used car uh, monthly payment is 391. Um, average monthly rent for a one bedroom apartment in LA is $1,949. And I can vouch for that because my son lives in the Valley and he has a one bedroom apartment and he's paying about uh, $1,900 plus utilities. Um, I got this stat from um, our, our, uh, our website where the average annual salary for accounting majors is $60,000. Sounds pretty high, right? But when you break that down per month, it's $5,000 a month. And when you start looking at all these different payments here and there, that 60,000 doesn't really go a long way. Um, 10 to 15, that's how often an average person changes jobs. Um, forty percent is the number of um, adults who wouldn't be able to cover a four hundred dollar emergency with cash, and this survey was done in twenty eighteen, and I wonder what this number would look like, um, you know, during twenty twenty. I wonder if this number is going to go up or down. Um, Sixty-five, $6,538.37. $6, um, this is the interest uh, over 10 years at 4.5% on a student loan balance of $27,156. Um, if you buy a car, 15 to 20%, that's the value that it loses in the first year. So when you ask me, hey, uh, still, um, should I buy a new car or not? My answer is always going to be no, because buying a new car is the fastest way to lose your, you know, 15 to 20% of your hard earned money, just like that. Um, I asked about how many of you have a good network. Look at this stat right here. 60% of jobs are found through networking. I can vouch for job. Uh, I can vouch for that statistic. Um, the job that I have right now, I found because uh, my senior manager called me up and said, hey, you know what, you might want to talk to so-and-so. Uh, he needs project manager 
procedures right now, and um, you know you should apply. So you know uh, that's how that's how I got the that that lead. Um, more than seventy percent of people who are currently employed are considering a new job. Um, yeah, for a time, you know, I was one of those individuals, right? Oh, what would it be like on the on the other side? Um, Twenty years. That's the typical repayment period for borrowers with between twenty to forty thousand dollars in federal student loans. Twenty years. So if you graduated when you're twenty-five and you owe anywhere from twenty to forty thousand dollars, unless you put a plan in place, it's gonna take you twenty long years to pay off that loan. It's a long time. It's like forty-five years old getting ready to retire you probably have kids by then and then the good news for those of you who are millennials 62 percent of you said that you're confident that if they lost your main source of income tomorrow that they could find equally good or better work within three months so what do you guys think of that stat do you guys agree with that stat um raise your hand in the reaction window if you agree with that stat Hmm. One person agree with that stat. Okay. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, pre-COVID. That is true. That is true. Okay. All right. So like I said, um, I, I graduated from Cal Poly Pomona in 1990. And uh, because I was involved in a student club, I, I actually uh, got a job lined up at LA County by the time I graduated. So um, I didn't necessarily have to worry about where to live because I was able to negotiate uh, an agreement with my godmother. And, and I said, hey, um, Nina, if I could live in your house and take care of it, can I live in it for free? You know, and so I was very lucky that, um, that she allowed me to do that. Um, I didn't really have any car payment, right? So that worked in my favor and, but, as the oldest child in a nation family, there is this understanding that when you get a job, you're supposed to help out your family. So I don't know how many of you have those kind of expectations, but I sure did, right? So well, what did that mean? You know, that meant that, um, um, you know, if, if, if my sister needed, you know, money for books, uh, that it was my turn to help her out. And, and give her money for books. Um, if she needed help with tuition, you know, uh, do the same thing, right? So I don't know, again, uh, of those alumni that uh, are on the call today, how many of you have those same expectations? Um, I know I did. So I had to kind of like factor that in, um, you know, in, in my salary or in my budget. So my only plan and goal at that time was uh, to get promoted every chance that I can. And as long as my bank account did not have a negative balance, I was good. And, and so, you know, I was in my early 20s. I, I figured, hey, you know, I, I know how to manage my money. Um, you know, so as long as it's not red, I'm, I'm okay. And, um, but I wasn't consistent. You know, I, I didn't really have a good why, okay? So, but, but I was really lucky. Um, in that first job, I was partnered with, um, with the senior developer. His name is Roger, and he, he was blind, but you know, despite that disability, he was able to find all the coding errors or all the coding mistakes that I have you know, in, my, in my code. And, and one of the things that, that he did extra for me was you know, he and I talked about, he actually talked to me about the importance of planning for the future. And so he was the one that strongly insisted that I contribute to a retirement plan. And so I, I remember fondly, you know, I, I told him, Roger, I'm 23. What are you talking about? Saving for retirement. You know, I'm already contributing to this plan at work. You know, I, I don't need to have a 401k. And, you know, again, he was the one that told me that you know, with my age and with time working for me, I would be happy that, you know, 30 years from now that, you know, I took his advice. And you know what? 
30 years later, I am so glad that I, I followed Roger's advice because, you know, every time we met, right, uh, during our mentoring sessions, one of the first things he would ask is, are you seeing red yet? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing red and I'm bleeding and, you know, I, I'm putting away money in that retirement plan. But um, the, the, one, the other thing that he told me is that, you know what, you need to pay yourself first. And the way you pay yourself first is really setting aside that dollar for your retirement because money you don't see is money you don't spend. So that was really good. And, and over the, the next, um, you know, the 90s, the, that first decade, um, I bought a house, I got married, I had my first kid. And by the time um, uh, the year 2000 came around, you know, I was on my third job. So, you know, I was really, you know, looking at this stat for how often an average person changes job. You know, I, I was actually slower, but, you know, then again, you know, you take a look at um, a lot of people actually change jobs a whole lot more often than that. Um, and, you know, by then, my, my why was really, hey, okay, um, make sure that, you know, take care of the kids, of, of my kid, and, and do well at work. And one of the things that, um, uh, that's helped me a lot, you know, uh, with the job that I had in the late 1990s was that we, it was a financial institution and um, money management was really one of the, um, the, the skills, right, the, the, that I learned over time because I ended up managing a team and managing the financials for that, uh, for that team as well. So um, in the year, the decade of the 2000s, I added two more children moved over to another house, and moved up in rank at my third job. Uh, this past decade, I actually got laid off, took a year off, and now I'm at my fifth job. And uh, my oldest son, like I said, graduated from Cal Poly and is now living on his own. So um, if you look at financially, right, what has happened in in these three decades, the decades of the 90s, the decades of the 2000s and 2010s, um, there's gonna be patterns. So, you know, we had recessions during the 1990s. Um, you know, we had 9-11, uh, you know, in, in early 2000s, right? Um, the financial market would go up and down. And uh, honestly, you know, one of the things that has, served me well, really served me well, was uh, learning to live within my means. Um, if I got a bonus, I, I actually, all I did um, was spend $50 of that bo bonus, and us as a family would go out to dinner, and uh, the rest of that bonus would go away, and we would save that. Um, the other thing, too, that, that really helped me out was, you know, I, I, continue to build my network at work and also my network outside of work. So, um, you know, LinkedIn, LinkedIn was what, uh, introduced in the, um, the early, like I started using LinkedIn actively, um, like maybe like 2005, 2006. So, so I really worked hard at, you know, developing my LinkedIn profile, reaching out to folks and, and then, where were um were needed i also volunteered to help people out and you know whether it's reviewing reviewing a resume or putting in uh, a good word for somebody you know uh, as a rest serving as a reference you know those type of things coming back to cal poly pomona and speaking at classes serving as um a uh, teacher for a day you know those type of things you know it it really helped branch me out and, and again, you know, um, this type of thing right here is something that, you know, sharing information because that's what, you know, that's what we all do um, uh, as a Bronco. You see here, so any questions so far for me on, on what I've um, talked about so far? Let's see here. 
no questions. Okay, let's move on to the next screen. Okay, all right. So here are some things to do the lawn. Um, I, I, I do this a whole lot. Um, so if, if we have um, attendees here that are one or two years away from graduating, here are my recommendations for you. Are you an active member of a student club like MISA, uh, American Marketing Association? I'm, I'm speaking about business clubs because you know that's, that's what I'm familiar with, uh, AKSI. Are you an active member? And what I mean by active member is, you know, something, somebody who actually contributes to putting on events, um, helping out, you know, helping out and, and helping running the club. Uh, if you're not an active member, I would suggest that um, you start doing so. And, and here's why. Um, like I was telling you guys in the beginning, I, I got my job at LA. I already have my job at LA County lined up by the time I graduated. So let me share you this. Let me share the story of how I landed that job. So oh, I was a, um, a board member of MISA, and they needed a volunteer to help run the Meet the Firms night. And you know everybody else was like stepping back. And I said, okay, well, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna raise my hand. I'm gonna volunteer. Long story short, uh, I think, and, and again, right, I didn't do it by myself. You know, we actually had a team, but you know, as the person leading the, the event, my name was always out there and I got to speak in front of all these employers, um, you know, at the beginning of the event. Um, but long story short, um, I, I wasn't getting nibbles uh, with the um, on-campus hiring that we were doing at Cal Poly, but after that evening, I got 10 companies asking me to give them their resume, and they um, actually wanted to interview me and set up the interview to interview me. Um, after that evening and after my interviews, I actually had six offers. From, from these employers. And, and again, all because I volunteered, right? Um, honestly, I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know that it was going to be that successful. But again, when you put yourself out there and you're making the effort, you know, good things are gonna, ha uh, good things are gonna come your way. Plus the other thing too is a lot of my good friends right now are friends that I made because I was in these organizations at Cal Poly. Um, I don't know how many of you are Filipino, but I was also in Barcada. <laughs> so that was like, that was my um, affiliation too. That was one of the clubs I was affiliated with. And I was also at uh, UBSS. I was a UBSS president. But obviously you don't have to be president. Um, all I'm saying is that, you know, if you're gonna be in a club, you know, why not, you know, take the extra effort to really actively participate. And then at the same time, you're gonna be exposed to a lot of alumni. And that is one great way of starting that networking and really asking them, you know, taking the, taking the opportunity to ask them, hey, what's it like at your company? Especially if you don't really know what you wanna do, you don't know what industry you wanna land in, you know, Cal Poly, we, we have a great alumni network. And the one thing that I see over and over again is that our alumni association, our alumni actually want to help out their fellow Cal Poly Pomona, um, Pomona um, brothers and sisters. The other thing too is, are you leveraging the career center, you know, for help with your job search? Raise of hands, how many of you have taken advantage of um, the Career Center at Cal Poly Pomona? One, two, three, four, awesome, okay. Um, if, you're, if you're a student right now and you haven't, you haven't taken advantage of it, I would strongly encourage you to do that. And the reason why is number one, you're already paying for it. Um, number two is two years after you graduate, 
those same services that the career center is offering is going to cost you a whole lot of money, a lot of money. And I can vouch for that. So while you're there, you know, they have great services like, you know, resume review. Um, they will do a, um, a, a, a mock interview. I, I think they still do that. They do a mock interview. And so you can, you can really see, you know, how you look during the interview and you can practice. Practice makes perfect. Um, they also have information about companies, right? So we have companies that come to Cal Poly specifically to recruit. They can probably hook you up with alumni from those companies. So you can actually have that in-depth conversation. What do you like? What do you like about working at, you know, such and such company? I know when I went, um, it was, it was cool if you actually, um, if you actually got a job with a consulting company like Accenture or Pricewaterhouse, it was very glamorous, right? The job I got was working for a government agency. It's not as glamorous, but it was still a job, right? But again, to me, it, it was a good start. It's really what you do in that job, you know, that, that will uh, work out for you rather than the name of the job it's, or the name of the company itself. And do you have a LinkedIn profile? You know, are you actively updating it? So that's one of the, the things that, you know, I emphasize to um, a lot of the new alumni or like the up and coming, you know, graduates from Cal Poly is really start looking at that. Take a look and see, you know, like when you add on to your network, um, hey, so-and-so's profile looks really good. Maybe you can copy that, you know, you can copy the format of what, what they're putting on in that profile. But like in YouTube, anybody heard about the YouTube algorithm? Yes, no, sure. No. Okay, yep, okay. So the YouTube algorithm is that um, if you click the like button, you know, if there's some engagement, right, in your YouTube channel, the more popular uh, you, you are gonna get and the more that your video will actually come up, you know, when somebody's searching for, um, you know, a, to a particular topic. Same thing goes with LinkedIn, right? If you're active on LinkedIn, the more that your name comes out there, the more visible you are. Um, and then especially if, again, you know, you're actively updating it with your accomplishments, you know, what you've done, um, it, it, so on and so forth. And so I've actually seen a lot of recent Cal Poly the grads from the College of Business doing that, and I think they're doing a fantastic job. Okay, next one, graduated and working. If you fall into this category, I'm gonna repeat some of my lessons learned again. Do you have a mentor? If you don't have a mentor, go find one. And you know what, the worst case that uh, can happen is the person that you're reaching out to would tell you no, right? But um, there are probably leaders in your organization that you admire. And, and so, you know, one of the things could be, you know, set up a, a 15, 20 minute meeting with them just to get to know them and let them know who you are. Um, rather than just kind of like sitting at your desk, doing your work and then going home and not doing anything, you know, and, and some of the, the traits of a lot of the, the people that I know are successful, you know, is they're, they're not only working on, you know, delivering good quality work, but they're also building their network. They're, they're socializing their ideas, they're getting input, and they're making their ideas better. So that's um, lesson number one is find that mentor. Do you have a development plan? If you don't, you know, let's put one together. The two companies that um, I've been involved in, luckily, you know, that's, um, that's one of the, um, the, the things that we have. You know, not only do we have a performance plan, but we also have a development plan. And the development plan I've had always consisted of something along the lines of, you know, my, my soft skills, my technical skills, and my leadership skills. So if that concept of, the, of a development plan is foreign to you, um, hit me up on this LinkedIn group that I just started and then we can start talking about it. Um, is your financial house in order? 
So again, right, if you have a student loan, do you have a plan for paying it off? Do you have a plan for paying it off right away? Um, you know what, if there's not a plan to do that, I would suggest that um, that that'll be one thing that you put into place. I mentioned earlier that um, I got laid off. And so um, a few, um, three years ago, I, I got laid off after 20 years with my previous organization. I love, love working for that company. And, and so when news of me being laid off, um, you know, came around, you know, the organization, um, you know, I got a lot of people asking me, you know, are you going to be okay? Uh, let me know how I can help and so on and so forth. Um, I actually looked at that event as a blessing, you know, and, and again, you know, people will ask me, well, why would you call being laid off a blessing? Well, I've, I've always wondered, you know, what would it be like to just be a mom and a wife and stay at home, right? And, and that's all I would focus on. And, you know, because of my severance pay, you know, I, I, was, able, I was able to do that. But the other thing, too, is that um, that was my opportunity to recharge. Uh, that was my opportunity to, like, really volunteer and help out at my kids' high school. And, and really take a more active role in, in their life, right? Because kids grow up fast. I'm sure your parents will tell you that time and time again. You know, you guys grow up fast. All of a sudden, you know, you, you know you're in kinder, you know, kindergarten taking pictures and then fast forward just a few years, oh my God, you're in high school and then now you're graduating in college, right? So I really wanted to be able to take that time and, and really, you know, hang out with them, right? Uh, they're teenagers, or well, they were teenagers then, and I had a great time, and I, ho I hope they had a great time. I, th I think they did, but I looked at it as a blessing. The other reason why um, I wasn't as worried was because over the last few years, I've been working on building my emergency fund. So when 2000 happened, when the economy started, you know, tanking down, and I realized, oh my God, you know what, if, if I got laid off or, you know, something ha happened to where, you know, one of, either myself or my husband lost our jobs, you know, would we be able to handle it? I don't know. And so I started um, by putting in $50 a month towards my checking account. It's not a whole lot, right? But I said, you know what, something is better than nothing. Am I still doing that today? Yes. You know, so, so the other thing too, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm normally, I'm, I'm a very upbeat person, right? And attitude really shapes, you know, attitude impacts everything, right? Um, when I got laid off, I could have said, you know, woe is me, you know, that's not fair, blah, blah, blah. You know, instead, the way I looked at it was, hey, you know what? This is going to be my year off. I'm going to look at it as a blessing. Um, you know, I'm going to meet new people. I'm going to work on building my network, rebuilding my network, reaching out, you know, um, strengthening myself, strengthening my financial house, you know, those type of things. So attitude is everything. Um, you know, when I talk about building your financial house and all that, you know, with, with everything happening in COVID right now, um, you know, that should also help you, you know, figure out your plan for the future. You know, if you're employed right now, my question is, the thing to do with the lawn is, do you have enough that if you, lo you lost your job today, that you'll be able to survive with three months of your expenses, six months of your expenses? Because unemployment is not really anything to, to live on. I know I got unemployment and it wasn't a whole lot. Are you familiar with your, all, of, all of the benefits that your company has to offer? And are you maximizing them? Health, dental, and vision. Do you know, you know have you done your research about them and what options? Are you, are you taking advantage of the tuition reimbursement plan? And so, um, 
people when I when I announced at work, right, that um, you know I was going back for my masters. The one question, the one question that people ask me is, why? You know, why are you still interested in getting your masters? And I told them, why not? I was, this was a goal of mine, you know, after I graduated from Cal Poly some years ago, right? And I have the opportunity to do it now. It is never too late, right? So if, if I can go back to school and, and get my master's degree, then, you know, everybody on this call, I mean, again, right? You know, if, if your company offers a tuition reimbursement plan, check and see if they'll pay for certification. My project management certification, the exam at the boot camp was paid for by my previous company. And I am getting a lot of calls and inquiries on LinkedIn right now from recruiters asking me, hey, we saw your profile, you know, are you interested? And because they're seeing that I have my certification. You know what, was, was it difficult to take that test? Um, and I can tell you it was. I, I even had food poisoning when I was taking that certification exam, but you know what, I got through it and I got that three letter designation right behind my name. And I saw the chat a uh, comment here, so expensive. Actually, you know what? There are um, there are online programs that are up where you can actually get master's degree, and they're just as rigorous. And and again, you know, if if you want to learn more about that, you can ask me on on the the LinkedIn group uh, the LinkedIn group that um, you know we're gonna share with you today. Um, charitable giving and charitable match. So, you know, you may be in a position to give money right now, but the other thing that I, I would encourage you guys to do, um, regardless of, of whether you're a student or if you're like a new alumni, is to be able to give back. The, you get more than what you give is, is one of my mantras, right? And it's, again, a lot of the, a lot of the things that I learned is through all, all these volunteer um, uh, volunteer events that I've actually par particip uh, participated in. Oh, second tip is your financial house in order, right? So um, I, I would give back. If you don't have the money right now, I would give back in time. Uh, if you find that uh, you're also wanting to like help or mentor or share experiences with with others. That's a great way. That's a great way to do it. And you know, pay it forward. There's a lot of alumni that's going to be providing these type of sessions. And so find find that that talent you have to give back to others. Graduate if you have graduated and you're not currently working. So the first thing I'm gonna say is what? Do you have a plan, right? Um, do you have a plan for landing that job? Are you tapping into your network? And what are you doing in the meantime? So, so I can share with you, during the time that I was on break between, in between jobs, I actually had a structure to my day. And, and so, part of my day was actually spending an hour to an hour and a half, you know, every day or every other day as my schedule permitted to look into companies that I would be interested in applying for a job, uh, looking to see if I had a contact in LinkedIn who worked in that company and, you know, asking them, you know, what the, what the company is like, you know, what do they think, um, so on and so forth. So, you know, you gotta have a plan. And I also joined um, a few of the LinkedIn groups. And again, right, you know, exchanging information left and right with, you know, friends in my network. Um, I'm an active Facebook user. And so I typically do a lot of crowdsourcing there. So again, if, if you're on Facebook or if you're on the gram, Instagram, um, leverage those social media 
and see if um, there are um, leads that you can take advantage of. And yeah, what are you doing in the meantime? And is there structure in your day? So on the right side of the screen, um, I jotted down a few resources. And, and one of the books that I've read um, early on, like I think in the early 1990s, is The Millionaire Next Door by uh, Thomas Stanley. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by uh, Stephen Covey. And um, the one thing that um, you're going to hear him or, you know, hear people say is begin with the end in mind. So when we're talking about understanding your why, um, you know, where do you want to be um, when you grow up? I mean, I haven't grown up yet, so I'm always like refining, you know, my why. My why right now is really, uh, I have three right, is um, uh, being able to, I want to be able to um, help pay for uh, kid number two and kid number three's education, college education. Um, the number two why is um, making sure that my husband and I have, um, have a good retire um, retirement balance so that we can retire in, you know, whenever it is that we decide to retire. And, you know, my third why is, you know, I want to continue to be able to give back, not just to my family and friends, but, you know, um, other people within my circle. Um, and, then, and then I was doing some research on, you know, on the web, and I thought I'd share these um, 12, 12 millionaire habits that um, uh, I think I talked through during this presentation um, that might be valuable to you. Always add value, you know, in whatever you do, right? Don't just, you know, if you're working, don't just do the bare minimum, but really add value. That's one way to get noticed. Um, I'm not sure about the next one, wake up early. Um, but you know what? I think some people are morning people. And so they find that the first hour, you know, after they've woken up is when they do their best work. So um, that's, that's a great tip. Exercise. You know, if, if um, you're not taking care of yourself, then you're, you know, you know, about to get sick and it's going to impact you, impact your, you know, relationships. And so, you know, that's another thing that I'm trying to do is exercise. Daily goal, set, daily goal setting. Um, I don't know how many of you guys find, you know, like at the end of your day, when you look back at all the things you accomplished, you found out that, oh, I really, did, you know, what did I do with my day, right? This is a really great exercise, especially like um, I know that what, what I find that's be very beneficial for me is writing stuff down. You know, the whole, that, that process of writing things down on paper really ingrains in me about what I have to do. Um, effective time management. Um, you know, this is something that I'm continuing to work on every single day. And it's funny, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my whiteboard here on my screen, I, I don't think you can see it, but I have, I have my schedule here. 6 to 2.30 work, 2.30 to 3.30 nap. That's my self-care. 3.30 to 4.30 make dinner. Most days it's like, you know what, let's go fast food for right now if, if, if I'm being lazy. 5 to 7 p.m. study for, you know, one of my, my master classes. And then... <laughs> And then my son, he thought he was being cute. He put 7.30 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. fight club. <laughs> so obviously that's not going to happen. But, you know, you, I think you guys get the idea, right? Effective time management. You write it down so that it really sinks in with you. Networking. I don't know how many times I can emphasize that enough. Really networking. You know, don't be that person that, would only come by with their group of friends uh, to their group and said, I need help. You know, it, it has to be like a really two way relationship. Right. And, you know, you have to, yeah, you can't, you can't just always be the taker. You also, also have to be the giver. Inner sizing. And I think inner sizing is really, you know, again, doing these looking back, doing a retrospective. Okay. What can I change? What can I do better? 
and putting on a plan to improve yourself. Healthy diet, um, not to say anything about that anymore because I'm not, um, I love food, so my diet's not always healthy. Uh, number nine, saving and investing. And again, right, if you have great financial foundation, uh, if, if you have no debt, there, there are a lot more options for you. And let me, let me give you a quick story about um, the whole saving and investing part. So um, like I, I mentioned earlier, you know, my, um, my oldest son, he's a top only mom. And one of the things that he and I worked on over the last three years is, you know, graduating from school debt free and, and not really having any debt if he can, you know, if we can help it. And um, so, so he was very lucky. He graduated without any debt and uh, he wanted to look at this opportunity to work outside of, uh, outside of California. And although it's not going to pay a whole lot uh, compared to what he could have been making, you know, working here in California, um, it was going to give him the experience that, that he needed, um, you know, for, for the goal that he had, um, you know, for, you know, where he wanted to be in like two or three years. And so even though as a parent, you know, my husband and I didn't really relish the idea of our son moving away from us. Um, you know what we said, Hey, go for it. Now is the time to explore and, and see, you know, um, what working in that company would look like. And, you know, and again, just know that if you want to come back, you want to make sure that, you know, you're going to have the resources so that you can come back to California. And so, you know, he actively worked on a budget, gave every dollar a name and, you know, almost Two years later, he, he found another opportunity in California, you know, to work for a video game company. And that's one of, one of his goals was to work for a video game company. And, um, you know, and, and because he was financially sound and he didn't, you know, he didn't have any encumbrances or debts, you know, he was able to move back, find an apartment, you know, somewhere in, in, in LA and, you know, if he chooses to, you know, switch jobs again, you know, he can do so. And again, because he's not worried or tied down to, well, I don't want to leave because, you know, this job is paying me a whole lot of money and, you know, I don't want to lose on that money. Right. You know, he has options because he does, you know, again, there's not like a debt that he's in, um, that he needs to pay off, uh, working with a mentor. I think I think I uh, beat that horse to death. Mindfulness and contribute to others. So, what about these? Is going to be on your action plan today. You know, what kind of thing can you implement today? What kind of uh, advice can you implement thirty days from now, sixty days from now, you know, six months from now? What is your take action plan? So, I think with that. Um, um, we're going to open up the, oh, it's an hour already. So I, I think we have time for a couple of questions. And Andrea, you think? Yeah, if anyone has uh, last minute questions, please type it in the chat and we'll go ahead and try to get those answered. Um, so there's a comment. I like the concept of intersizing. Uh, never heard of it. Is there any additional questions? Hey, Andrea, can you also share the, the LinkedIn group that I put together for this, um, uh, for this presentation? Sure. I have it, Ooh. Andrea. I okay, cool. All right. How much money? How much money would you have to save to buy a house nowadays? Well, it depends where you're going to live, right? So if you're going to live in California, um, <laughs> at least 20% correct, Ashley. Um, but 20% uh, is all relevant, right? Um, you know, if, if you want to buy a house in LA, uh, houses there are probably going to be like in the 800,000s. 
um, you know, if you look at a state like in Arizona, uh, the houses there are probably a whole lot more affordable. So the answer is it all depends. Oh, um, any specific high yield tips for maximizing your income and maybe your salary negotiation tips? So, um, Nina, are you are you a new grad um, or are you um, are you like still in school? Hey, um, there I am. Okay. Um, Hi there. I, I got my master's in two thousand sixteen. Okay. After, so I worked at UC Davis from like 06 until 2014. And then I decided to change my career when I got a master's. And okay. then I went back to my old job. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. And then when I went back to my old job, I did not negotiate my salary, even though I know everybody shouldn't negotiate their salaries. Okay. Well, um, I, I think, I think, well, uh, you, you say you're working for a UC, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, you might want to take a look and, and see what, uh, what they can actually do because typically like uh, universities, there's not a lot of things that they could do as far as, you know, being able to like increase your PTO, your pay time off, but maybe you can even ask for your organization or department to pay for you to attend a conference or um, maybe for you to... Um, uh, pay for you to get your certification, for example, especially if you can uh, provide them with um, kind of like the benefits of what the organization will get, you know, if you have that increased um, knowledge and skill, you know, and getting certified in something like project management or what have you. Or I, I don't know what, um, what department you're in at UC Davis, but, you know, there might be certain conferences too where that you can attend so you can, again, increase your skill set and then also give you the opportunity to network. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I also have like a question slash comment. Like, sure. I like thinking about money and talking about money as well. How do you sort of like, if you wanted to go into financial education and within your community, like what you basically did, how do you sort of say, yes, I'm qualified, even though we're not qualified to give out sort of general financial, personal finance kind of like advice? Oh, um, yeah, so, yeah, so I kind of, you know, he hesitate to do that. Um, but, but maybe like one of the things that you can do too is um, there are actually firms out there um, that where you can maybe um, reach out to and, and see if they have um, like a community. So, you know, I'm going to name drop uh, Dave Ramsey. I don't know if you've heard of Dave Ramsey, but, you know, Dave Ramsey, uh, they, one of the, the things that they do with Dave Ramsey is, you know, they, they have people that teach financial peace, financial peace university. And then the other thing is, I think they also have a program where uh, you can learn to um, also promote a lot of the, um, the teachings that they have and, and then you can get certification. Because really, really it's that, that knowing that you're certified in something helps. If you don't have that certification, it's, it's really hard to, um, to build that trust with others, right? So, um, you know, like the things that I do, I, I don't say, hey, you know, invest in this stock. But my, my whole thing as far as, you know, communicating the importance of having a, a good financial foundation is um, talking about, you know, not incurring any more debt, especially for, for um, you guys that are just starting out. One of the things that um, went out the window for me was my logic when my husband and I bought a fixer upper. All of my financial logic went out the window because I felt compelled to, you know, want to fix up the house. And, you know, that's like one way you're going to go down the rabbit hole and, and, you know, get yourself into trouble. But again, right. If, if you, and, you know, whoever you're working with, if you guys have a solid plan, you know, for, Hey, if you want to buy a house, um, you know, you have to be prepared uh, to buy the house because owning a house comes with a lot of responsibility 
safety. So maybe that's the other tip I would share with you guys is don't be don't be in a hurry to buy a house. And uh, before you do that, make sure that, again, you have a good emergency fund because there's always something wrong that will happen with the house. Okay, with, with a master's degree, is my employer required to pay you more? Um, I think it depends. My organization, um, they're not required to pay me more. Really, my compensation is based on my performance. Um, that is through with the other organization I was with. Um, you know, having a master's degree is really just my personal goal. I think that I will gain more skills that will make it more valuable, uh, that will make me more valuable to my company. So I think if my employer sees that I'm doing really well and I'm exceeding a lot of the, the goals and their expectations of me, then that's where that increase in pay is going to come in not because I have a master's degree, because I can tell you that there's a lot of people, you know, that have master's degree, but, you know, it's all in name only, right? It's really what you do with that degree. Okay. Any other question? I just have I, a comment, sorry. Sure. I think the I, most important thing from your talk is like knowing your why um, mm -hmm. then you can decide if you want to get in debt because you, that is important to you to reach your why. That's fine too, as long as you have a plan to how to get out of it. Yep, right. And you know what? Um, uh, I often joke that my mom was the queen of side hustles even before the word side hustle came into play. And uh, she was a college professor, but you know, she also sold, you know, she had side hustles so that she could generate more money. And um, you know, and, and again, right, it's, it's more, if you understand your why, and if you believe in it strong enough, you know, you're going to come up with a plan to, to get, to get to that point that, um, you know, at your journey. But like I said, it's, um, I wouldn't, if, if I could do it all over again with, you know, with what we did with our house, you know, our first house and all that, I probably would have like said, you know what, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until we had the money to pay for all these improvements and put ourselves in a, in a better financial situation. Because um, I can tell you that uh, living, to pay, living paycheck to paycheck is, is not a good place to be, especially during these times of the pandemic. Oh my God, it's, it's not. And so, you know, again, I can never emphasize it enough. If, if you're carrying credit right now, figure out a way that you could take a look at your budget and so that you're able to live with, with what you're making. Okay, any other questions before we um, end the meeting? I, I, I thank you all for your engagement. Uh, it's, it's hard to do a presentation like this all over on Zoom. I'm, I'm on meetings every single day, you know, every hour on the hour, that kind of thing, but uh, with people I know. And, and so um, thank you for, for joining me and, and uh, humoring me and listening to what I have to share with the group. And, you know, I'd be happy to, you know, continue the conversation with the LinkedIn group that uh, Anna has posted here in the chat window. And let's do that. And let's all, all help each other out as, you know, future Cal Poly alumni and Cal Poly alumni. Turning the floor back to you, Andrea. Okay, again, just thank you everyone for coming. Um, we'll be sending the recorded version of this presentation in the next coming days. Um, we also have a Bronco Mentoring Network where if you are looking for a mentor, you can find alumni that are willing to help. Um, so I'll send the link for that uh, along with the recorded presentation. And I'm also, full disclosure, I'm also a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> and just thank you so much, Cecile. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you help uh, fellow Broncos and um, check out our alumni website. We have, uh, we're trying to provide uh, different opportunities for alumni and students to get wisdom from our alumni. Okay, everyone have a good night. Bye. Bye.